Hey everybody, it is time for one of my favorite videos. It's time to talk about the books that are coming out in April of 2020. It is so exciting to do this video because it's one of my favorites. And there are a lot of exciting books to tell you about. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are all doing very, very well. I hope you are all very, very safe and you are all feeling well. And I hope all of your families and extended friends and extended families are also doing well in this crazy time. And I'm hoping you're finding your new normal. So this video is going to be one that I do every single month where I talk about the books that are coming out. And it's for me, sort of a comfort video. It's nice to do this video because it's normal for me to do this video. And right now, what I normally do in my life is a little bit up in the air. Normalcy has been sort of shifted to the left, right? <clears throat> So I'm really actually quite excited to do this book. Now, as you got this book, this video, as you guys always know, these are not all of the books that are coming out in the month of April. That book, that video would be infinitely, infinitely long. These are all of the books that were sent to me by publishers. So a big, big thank you to them. Um, I really do appreciate it. As always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these from your local independent bookstores. They need us now more than ever. They are shipping. I have been making an order a week just to support my favorites, and I am getting them in the mail, so I know you will get them too. I have also heard that the digital library world is up and at them. I've heard people have been using their Overdrive and their Libby, and they're doing great work getting those uh, books digitally available through your libraries. So use that if that is how you get your books. Now, I will say the publishing world, like the, all of us, is sort of in a state of flux. So some books, publishing dates are been moved. Things have been moved up. Things have moved been moved back. Um, I have not checked all these. So I'm using actually the books, the dates that are on the books themselves. Um, I do know a couple of them have actually come out early. I will talk about those, but I am not checking to see if the dates have been pushed. So I apologize if I get some of these publication dates wrong because uh, things are changing. The world is changing. So let's get started. And we're going to start with actually two books that have come out early. They were meant to come out February, I'm sorry, April 7th, and they came out in late March. And the first actually is my current read, and that is Godshot by Chelsea Beaker. And this is out from Catapult right now. Look at that cover. You know you want that. You just want it for the cover. Set in Peaches, California, which is sort of in our central valley in this world, we are in, the ta in a town that has been devastated by drought. All of its sort of income and economy was uh, invested in the raising of grapes to turn into raisins, but drought has really wiped out this entire town. And as so happens, in comes a charismatic religious leader, gets the community to start to worship him, and a cult has sort of cultivated around this man and this community. Our young main character is a young girl. She has just come into womanhood. I'm going to use that phrase for her period. Um, and I'm going to say that that is a significant point in <clears throat> the religious growth for this young girl. Um, and what we find is that she lives with her mother and they live in this community and her mother has sort of fallen off the path. And she winds up getting kicked out of the community and the young girl is there by herself and as you can imagine, this religion and the men in this religion take advantage of her. And she decides one day to go sort of on a hunt for her mother by following the steps and the tracks that she knows of where she's went. And that leads her to sort of this local house that is a phone sex operation, I guess is the word for it, where she meets other women and she starts to sort of investigate into where her mom has gone and what that means for her. That is as far as I've gotten. It is fantastically written. It's got a real sense of reality to it. Um, there's sort of a viscosity to the language that is really easy to get lost into, but really 
just really sits right on your brain as you read it. I hope that makes sense. I'm absolutely loving it. It is out now. It came out a bit early. It's beautiful. And that is Godshot by Chelsea Baker Beaker out from Catapult Books. Okay. Now this book actually I just pre or, or just ordered from one of my local independent bookstores. And that is Barker House by David Maloney. This came out from Bloomsbury and it did come out early as well. Now, this is sort of like, I always do this whenever I compare story, uh, books that are sort of collections of short stories that make up an overall narrative. I always refer to Olive Kittrich. I don't know why. It's sort of the epitome of that, uh, that style in my head. There are many books that do that, but Barker House is that same type of thing. These are, this is the story of, is it nine? Nine correction officers that all work in the same jail system from people who are very experienced, people that are very jaded, people that are brand new, and also the only woman um, correctional officer that's working on the floor. So you get all of their stories in different chapters and they become interconnected. Um, I'm really actually quite excited about this. I don't think I've read anything from this perspective before. And I believe from what I've read, David Maloney actually worked as a correctional officer. So there is some sense of his own um, reality of that narrative in this book. And it is coming. The uh, finished copy is coming to me any day now from, I think I got it from Kepler's. I think that's where I ordered his book from in Mount, uh, Menlo Park, one of my favorite bookstores. I, di I digress. But that is Barker House by David Maloney out from Bloomsbury. I think this is going to be a good read. I'm really actually quite excited about it. So we're going to move on to books that actually came out today, April 7th, and I've got quite a little stack here. Um, and the first I'm going to tell you about is The Subtweet by Vivek Sharaya, and I'm saying that absolutely wrong. And this is out from ECW Press. Um, let me see if I can tell you what ECW stands for. I don't know that I know that actually off the top of my head. But this is from ECW. It is out now. And this is actually a fun um like a fantastic premise. So this is the story of two women artists that get together to create music. And as they come together, their friendship grows. And then one of their careers really takes off while the others plateaus. And what winds up happening is one puts a tweet into the world that destroys their friendship, destroys um, the career of one of them, and sort of takes a turn that sort of changes everything. And I think that this is so relevant now with the world of tweeting and the world, especially we in the U.S., live with when it comes to some person, a nameless person's ability to tweet nonsense. Um, so I just think that this is really interesting. I love this cover. I love the fact that she is on a landline and we're talking about tweeting. So much to unravel. Absolutely love it. So this is the subtweet by Vivek Sharaya out from ECW. This is a small independent press, you guys. So if that interests you, please look to order that book directly from them um, and support them as well. <clears throat> The next book I'm actually about halfway through, and it's the collection of short stories by Catherine Scanlon called The Dominant Animal. I have to actually get this. This may be in my next order because I am a huge Catherine Scanlon fan. I kind of say that if you are a fan of Kelly Link's short stories, or even maybe the style of Samantha Schweblin, sort of that off odd kilter weird, uncomfortable brilliance, Catherine Scanlon will sit there for you. You will like her. Um, she has a way of her stories making you go, what the heck? I better read that again because I didn't get it. Oh, now I get it. Oh, now it's brilliant. Does that make sense? Um, it also has sort of a Black Mirror feel to me. So if you're a fan of that TV show, I think she's really, really talented. And I love that she's just sort of off center because it just challenges me and just fascinates me and excites me. So that is The Dominant Animal by Catherine Scanlon. And this is out from um, F um, MCD by FSG, um, who I absolutely love. And they did her first book and I love her very, very much. 
Another book that is actually on my TBR for April is Afterlife by Julia Alvarez, coming out from Algonquin Books today. Um, Julia Alvarez, well known for In the Time of Butterflies and How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents. Um, Afterlife is the story of a woman. She has just retired from being an English teacher for years and years and years. Her and her husband are set to enjoy their retirement when unfortunately he passes away unexpectedly. She's dealing with that, then all of the sudden an undocumented woman winds up on, a young girl actually, winds up on her doorstep pregnant and she has to make decisions. She has to leave the world of literature and talking about stuff and actually become a person of action. And that is what this book is about. I think it sounds fantastic. I've never read anything by Julia Alvarez that hasn't been fantastic. It just actually got a pretty darn good review in the New York Times, I think. I think I just read that on Twitter, the, the review on Twitter. <clears throat> so that is Afterlife by Julia Alvarez out from Algonquin Books. I feel like I should clear my throat. I have something weird going on. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Um, a book that I've talked about a bunch of times and actually a book that I just ordered my own copy above is How Much the um, How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang, one of my most anticipated reads of 2020. A reimagining of the American West gold rush tale told from the point of view of two young um, Chinese children who are searching for a place to bury their father after they have already lost their mother. Um, it's I love the way it says it here. It says, with their, with their father's body on their backs, they roam an unforgiving landscape dotted with buffalo bones and tiger paw prints, searching for a place to give him a proper burial. The siblings must battle their own secrets, the illusion of the American dream, and each other. Um, I actually have read about the first 25 pages of this, and I am in love with it. Um, but I want to read the final copy. I just want to make sure that I'm reading the final printed one, so I'm waiting for the actual book to get here. And so that's How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang, out from Riverhead Books. I think this book is going to be phenomenal. So this is one that I really hope a lot of people get their hands on. Super, super cool. Um, a book, a big old chunky fantasy. Are we ready for a sort of a left turn? Let's talk about Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. I'm halfway through this, but as you guys can tell, this book is a chunk stir. Um, this is ex everything you want in an epic fantasy novel. But basically, the way it starts is we have a, a woman on the run. She is being chased with her son. They're on two horses. She is the um, queen of her land. And she has led a revolt against the government that rules everybody. And at the very, very beginning, she is caught and she is killed by this um, knight that uses magic, which he is not supposed to use. Then we fast forward, I think, 15 years later, and we have the son and the daughter that this woman never raised living sort of under captivity by the rulers of the land. And things are coming. There's some sort of invasion coming excuse me, and it's coming from outside and they are all getting ready as also this young boy is sort of being encouraged to lead his people in revolt again to try to become their own kingdom apart from the over um, overlords. That's the word I'm going to use. All of this comes together. The knight who killed their mother comes into, he believes that there is this invasion coming and he wants to protect this southern land. The actual people um, that are in power don't care for the southern land because it tried to revolt. So he goes down there to try to protect them. And these three people, their lives become intertwined. So it's everything you probably need in an epic fantasy. I'm absolutely loving it. It's just a chunkster of a book. So that is Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward, and this is out April 7th from Orbit. If you are in, mood, in the mood for an epic fantasy, that is the book for you. The last one that comes out today, April 7th, is Miss Austin by Gil Hornby. I am loving that Jane Austen is sort of having a resurgence right now again in the literature. Lots of books coming out about her. And this is actually set in 1840 and is the story of her sister, Cassandra. Her uh, Jane has already passed away. It's been about 20 years. Cassandra is living her own life and um, she uh, becomes intertwined. She has to go somewhere. She sort of has to find a place to end her life, to, to just live the end of her life in. And she winds up moving in with her long dead fiance's family. And at the same time, she becomes, um, she 
gets, she finds, I guess that's the right word, um, a collection of letters by her sister. And she is then sort of put in this position. Does she put these letters out there into the world or does she hide them because they tell her own secrets? So do you propagate the legacy of your very famous sister or do you protect yourself? Um, and your own personal secrets. I think that sounds really fun, and it sounds very much like a Jane Austen novel. So that is Miss Austen by Gil Hornby, and this is out from Flatiron Books um, today. You guys can get your copy right now. I know a lot of you are Jane Austen fans, aren't we all, in some way, shape, or form? Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about, now, the book says it's coming out April 14th. But for some reason, I feel like this one came out earlier. I'm not sure. But this is Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud out from One World. Um, this book summarizes itself better than I can. So it says, after Betty Ramden's abusive husband dies, she invites a colleague, Mr. Chetton, to move in with her and her son Solo at their lo as their lodger. Over time, these three form an unconventional family, loving each other deeply and depending on one another. Then one fateful night, Solo overhills Betty confiding in Mr. Chanton and learns a secret that plunges him into torment. His despair ultimately sends him running to, a lo to live a lonely life in New York City, devastating Betty in the process. Yet both Solo and Betty are buoyed by their continuing love and friendship of Mr. Chetton until his own burdensome secret is uncovered with heartbreaking repercussions. In vibrant, addictive, Trinidadian prose, love after love questions who and how we love, the obligations of family, and the consequences of choices made in desperation. So, you know I love a good family saga. You know I love a good family secret. And I've heard that this book actually has a lot of charm to it as well. So, that is Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud out from One World. Okay, now we're on to the last few books that come out on the 21st. Um, the first I'm going to tell you about, hopefully these won't fall off my lap, is Passage West by Rishi Reddy. This is out from Echo Books. I love Echo Books. Actually, do I not love all publishers? I love all publishers. But Echo Books today sits in my heart. Um, this is an Indian American story from India. It is about a group of Indian uh, men who move to California's Imperial Valley in the 1930s. And the reason they come over here to work is to um, create a better life for their family by becoming farmers down there. And it says that in the valley, civilization is still new and the rules are ever shifting. Alongside Karak, his uncle Javan, and Javan's nephew Amarjeet, Ram joins into the struggle to make ends meet as a sharecropper in the unforgiving desert. The valley is full of immigrants from other continents and the stakes are increasingly high. Just one bad harvest or one unfair sale could destabilize an entire family. The, as anti-immigrant sentiment begins to rise among the White Valley residents and as new laws are passed to support their position, all immigrants are threatened and there is murder in the air. So that's Passage West by Rishi Reddy. This is out um, uh, the 21st of April from Echo Books. Get your hands on it. And that cover is also gorgeous. Now, I live not too far from the uh, Salinas Valley. So where this book is actually... Um, I guess partially taking place. I guess maybe Imperial Valley maybe is slightly south from us. Um, but um, I have gone down there. It is amazing the amount of produce and uh, vegetables. Uh, produce is vegetables, Russell. But fruits and vegetables that are um, grown here in California that are sent out into the world. So um, yeah, California does a lot of that growing for the United States. So I have gone on a bunch of tours and it's just been fascinating. I digress again. Next is... Here We Are by Graham Shift Swift out from my friends over at um, Knopf. This is Knopf. Why does Knopf not have their little signature here thing on the bottom? That would have been helpful. Um, this is the story. Now, Graham Swift is, needs no introduction. He is an author that is very well known. But this is his latest novel to be published here in the United States. It is set in 1959 in England on a pier. We have three characters. One is a 
sort of like the magician. He is the, he puts on a show. He, we have his assistant, the woman that helps him put on his show. And then we have the guy who is sort of in charge of introducing it all, the um, master of ceremonies. And their act is doing very, very well during this time. Now it's doing this, it's having the success, but unfortunately the drama between the three of them begins to implode and derails their success. Now I've heard from a lot of people that this is a very good Graham Swift novel, um, not as greatest. We all have our opinions on that, but I really like the idea. I think it will be super fun and it's a short little thing. So I love a book that can just pack a punch with a story and that's Here We Are by Knopf. Oh, there's Knopf. Russell by Knopf, by, out from Knopf by Graham Swift on uh, April 21st. There you go. Okay, this is actually the third book in a fantasy series, Creatures of Charm and Hunger by Molly Tanzer. And this is um, also coming out from Mariner Books. And this is the third book in the series. Now, I don't know much about the um, the third book. I do know that this has to do with a school of, um, cra of magic craft. But it says, In the waning days of World War II, the Allied victory over all but certain desperate Nazi uh, diabologists search for a demonic superweapon to turn the tide. A secluded castle somewhere in the south of Germany serves as a laboratory for experiments conducted upon human prisoners, experiments as vile as they are deadly. Across the English Channel, tucked in the sleepy Cumbrian Chamberlain, lies the library, the repository of occult knowledge for the Society des Eclats, an international organization of diabologists. Their best friend, their best friends, Jane Blackwood and Miriam Cantor, tutored by the Society's librarian and Jane's mother, Nancy, prepare to go undergo the tests that will determine their future as a as diabologists. Now, J uh, Miriam's parents are missing and they are accused of being spies for the Nazis. And she goes on an adventure in order to deter and to debunk that uh, rumor. But Jane stays behind. She has her own obsession, her own issues as she gets ready to take the test to become a diabologist. So that is Creatures of Charm and Hunger by Molly Tanzer out from Mariner on April 21st. And the last but not least book, gosh, this video is a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, is actually a translated fiction, Life for Sale by Yukio Mishima, out from Vintage International. Let me make sure I tell you who this was translated by. Translated from the Japanese by Stephen Dodd. <clears throat> now, all I know about is this one is that this is called a campy cult classic from Japan. And this is the first time it's available in English. Now, this is what the cover is going to look like so you guys can see it. It's just on the back here. Vintage um, International, or this is actually um, Vintage Via. They are their translating line. They're new. They've been publishing a lot of really fun and exciting books. Let me hold that up for you right now. And um, this is, let me see. I'm so distracted. I'm trying to give you guys information. My brain doesn't work the same way that it used to anymore. And sometimes I'm actually having a hard time just retaining information. It says that long revered for his powerful, penetrating, and deeply serious novels, Yuko Mishima also wrote a number of popular novels, few of which have been translated into English. This one is after botching a suicide attempt, salary man Hano Yahamad. Yamada, sorry, I don't know why I put an H in that, Yamada, decides to put his life up for sale for the, in the classified sections of the two Tokyo newspaper. Soon, interested parties come calling with increasingly bizarre requests, and what follows is a madcap comedy of errors involving a jealous husband, a drug-addled heiress, poisoned carrots, and even a vampire. Do you guys need more? I'm going to hold this side up. This is A Life for Sale by Yukio Mishima, Translated by Stephen Dodd is what I said, right? Did I say Stephen Dodd? I think so. Stephen Dodd, and this is out from Harper. Yes. Okay, so that is a big stack of books. I cannot hold it all up here for you guys to see, but I hope, I really, really hope that some of these made it onto your TBR, and if you are so able, are able to pre-order one or two of them to support the authors from your local independent bookstores, and or try to get them on your digital library and get those digital copies to you through your library as soon as possible. As always, I could not do this without you. I know it is a crazy time, and I'm glad that we are here to support each other. And those viewers that comment and talk and watch, 
you guys, you're why I do this, and I absolutely love every single one of you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you stick around. I hope you like what I talk about. Books, books, books. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye!